Good day and welcome to another edition of Zero to Away in Python program. Today we'll be getting a latter part of what we started in the previous tutorial. That's functions in Python program. So basically we we'll start from local, what we mean by local and global scope. When you create a variable within a function, we learned how to create a function yesterday. We call that variable a local variable. It's within the local scope. While when you create a variable outside of a function, then we call say the variable is a global variable. Meaning a global variable can be used within a function, while a local variable that's a variable created within a function cannot be used beyond that function except otherwise stated so you can just read through what i wrote here so you can get more understanding of what i mean for example the ion we have here ion equals 345 is a local variable if we try to print ion beyond that that function it will not work so that's that you can see name ion not defined whereas it is defined within the function so it's within the local scope. So local variable cannot be used in the global scope. That's what I just stated there. But the same thing is what I'm explaining here. Egg equals 99. Bacon, print eggs. Then this bacon function that we created here, we call it within another function here too. So if we call this from this, it will actually print egg, which is 99. Whereas we've created egg here, which is zero. So it will still, Local scope cannot use variable in other local scope. That's basically what I just stated here. So what is it was created in this local scope cannot be used in this local scope. That's what I just explained there. So here's another one. Global variable can be read from a local scope. That's exactly what I explained in the beginning. So when you create egg outside of a function, if, we, if you run the algorithm, it will, call, it will of course call the egg in that egg is in the global scope so what is in the global scope can be used in the local scope yeah, what is in the local scope cannot be used in the beyond that scope so it's something like some when you are something like when they're defining what's it called to us mm, was it osmosis when we're in secondary school so that's that on that so if you print egg again here yeah, because egg is in a global scope you still see egg to be 42 there so define Okay, we define a new function here. We call it spam local. So if we print egg here, if we call spam now, it will print spam local. So whatever you have in a local scope will supersede what you have in a global scope for that particular function. You know, we've defined egg before, but in the local scope, we call it spam local. So whenever we call print egg within that function, it will use the one within its own local scope before it considers anyone beyond its local scope so here's another one egg equals bacon local so print egg then we call spam print egg if you see this if we call if you now call if you define egg to be global again and call bacon it will give you a new answer so for example see now we call egg global so Bacon, when we call bacon, egg equals bacon local, you can see. When we said print egg, it's called bacon local. Then we called spam within that function and said print egg. It's called spam local. That is, it's calling the egg in the spam function, not in the bacon function now. Because we call the spam function within the bacon function. So it's now printing the egg with that is in the spam function. That's why it's calling spam local here then when we now call we then said egg again so how many times are we printing egg now we printed one printed two then where am i getting this third one sorry the spam function actually has a print variable within it so that's why it's printing the spam local here. So when we call print egg again, you know we have egg inside spam, but it won't see the egg inside spam. We'll see the egg inside bacon. That's why it's printing bacon local here. So this function here, print egg, gave us this. Then spam went back here and gave us this. 
so spam local then print egg here give us bacon local again remember what i said you can use the variable of a function inside and that function so that's what is happening here now so that's that except what that other function returns don't worry i guess i explained return in one of our tutorials so you can just go and check what return does so print egg here now this egg here will now print global in that we are calling it outside of any function so that's that on that so define hey now i said except otherwise stated in the the other time so this is where it's otherwise stated if you put this this is a reserved word in python so if you put this behind any variable name it will make that variable even though it is within a function if you're not making a global variable so if you say global x and call x spam now if you okay let, let me just run this function so you see what i'm saying so you've made this global you now said egg equals global spam if you call spam now if you say print egg you know we call spam after we've stated egg equals global here yeah? so it will pick the new variable name which is what egg equals spam so if you call spam with outside the scope of this function now it will give us a it will give us spam it will, and if you print egg it will give us spam instead of giving us global because we def, you know in python when you define a variable and you define it again and give it a new a new value it will take the new value so we call spam after we've called eggs so and we've put global behind egg in that function so it will supersede so if you take a new a new variable which is x equals spam instead of x equals global that's what happened here so basically i wrote something here. i said there are four rules to tell whether a variable is in a local scope or global scope if a variable is being used in a global scope that is outside all functions then it's always global variable if there is a global statement for that variable in a function then it's a global variable like what we did here otherwise if the variable is used in an assignment statement in the function it is a local variable something like something like what we did here then but if the variable is not used at, in an assignment statement it is a global variable so that's that on that so here is another function spam now so we, you know we call this one global then here now this is local for example this is local because we didn't give it this global behind it so it's local here then this also is local we said print egg but this one will print the global one because we didn't state any variable for egg here so it will use the one in the global environment as what it's going to print here except the only time it will not print what is in the global environment is if the variable is actually stated within that function so now we said egg equals 42 this is also global so if we call spam now it will print spam because remember what i said the other time this one will now supersede what we define this spam global will supersede what we defined here because we made it global and we called it after this one so now if we call this function here we say print egg within this spam variable to give us an error and why is it giving us an error we will cause we called egg before we defined eggs you don't get we called egg here before we defined it if, if something like when something is not yet created and you are calling it nothing should respond but python needs something to respond so it will tell you there is an error so that's that's on that so unbounded local error local error egg reference before assignment exactly what i just explained so that's that so try out if in case you run into any bug when you are running your code try and read the error states error statement so you understand what's happening exactly <laughs> i don't know if you've played any game and probably the programmer made the mistake of not putting this try except close that's when you see the actual error behind the algorithm. I've, I've visited the website where I guess the person has not secured the website or the person has not removed the debug course through. So the the website was showing me the actual source code of that 
uh, of that website and that's actually a very bad practice it's not nice when you create an algorithm and someone is using it and it's giving them error that you could have just trashed out yourself so that's why we use try except clause so basically here we said divide by so if we run this what's happening it ran, remember python runs from big um, from top to bottom from left to right so if you see this it said divide by we wrote this function so when we said print func spam divide by two so it will give us 42 divided by two that's 21 then 12 divided by two that's i mean 42 divided by 12 that's 3.5 then divide by zero, you know, it's not possible to divide by zero. So zero division error. Then it will stop running the algorithm. So it catches an error here. So instead of running this too, it will not run this. It's just see the error and just leave the old code. But you can use the try except clause. So the try except clause does this. It will try the algorithm. If it's if there is an error, it will print the error you've given it. So error in, in invalid argument. Then it will continue running its algorithm. So it won't stop the way this one stops abruptly. So if we run this now, it gives us error, invalid argument, what you stated here. So none. It's returning none because there's no response to give. So then it runs the next one, which is divided by one. Note that any error that occurs in function calls in cause in a try block will also be caught so that's exactly what i just explained so if we now try to run this one too mind you we are using the try except clause after in the in the in what we call the function so this try except clause what it does is okay for example it will run this it will run this this one is an error and once it jumps here it can't go back to run this too so it's better to put it within your function rather than your users trying to use try and accept clause in their own algorithm so this this so you can see it did not run spam one which is 42 divided by one so a short number guessing algorithm i guess we can just run through this algorithm because our time is fast spent already so what this algorithm does basically is you guess a number okay it in python generates a random number you guess the number if the number is too high, it will tell you it's too high. If his number is too low, it will tell you it's too low. If the number is right, it will tell you good job, you guess the number right. And if you try for more than seven times, so I I in range one to seven. If you try more than seven times, then it will tell you nope. The number I was thinking was so it will now give you the number in case you did not get the number in there seven tries. So let's run this algorithm now and see okay, be, a number between one and twenty now. So let me give it thirteen enter your guess is too high let me give it 10 enter your guess is too low so i know my guess should be between 13 and 10 so 11 good job so the i guessed right on the third guess so it's actually telling me the number of guesses i tried before i got the right answer so you can just run through the algorithm you can modify it to do whatever you want it to do for you so this is the assignment for today so read through this assignment and try to do do it and when you finish doing it you can try put the try and exit clause to, to catch error whenever they are using your algorithm so see you in the next tutorial thank you bye bye